Welcome to Having Words. Today I'm joined by Penny Hughes. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Penny, this is your first time on not only the podcast, but on like audio anywhere. On For speaking, yeah. 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 Um, and how often would you say that I bring up my podcast in a, a, a um, normal conversation? So if you say you've got like... 20 conversations I'd say you bring it up in about 20 of them interesting okay yeah. so you're saying a, a 100% chance that I bring up my the, the Having Words podcast yeah. you're right I do in every single conversation and mm. I'm fine with that I love it um, how do you feel being on a microphone Penny um, being recorded not the best but it's well, fun. it's not live streamed it's right you can cut <laughs> yeah. around everything Woo! cut out all the stupid stuff I say oh <laughs> just, just me talking <laughs> uh, now Penny before we start, yes. I have some rapid fire questions Brilliant. for you. Um, keep in mind, rapid fire with the what, what they call quotations. Yeah. With rapid fire questions because he is doing the little air quotations. Speech yeah. Right rapid now. fire questions yeah. because so many of the guests they it's never rapid. Um, okay, so are you ready? Yes, I am. If you could buy any tub of food right now, what would it? What would you buy? Pancakes. Okay, that was. Pretty fast, actually. You might have to add some silence. <laughs> well, you, you know who you're asking. So. Exactly. I knew you were going to say pancakes. This is why I said, like, I'm not going to ask what's your favourite animal, because I know what you're going to say. What is tigers. It? Yes. <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows that it's definitely tigers. Pandas. Pandas, yeah. Um, Penny, what is your favourite summer activity? Ooh. Yeah. I do love a good beach day. Yeah. Barbecues at the beach, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Down on the beach. The... I mean, luckily, mm. we live quite close to the beach. Yeah. We've lived our entire childhood close to the beach. Mm. So we, we spend and all our summers down there. we moved to uni right next to a beach as well. Arguably a better beach. Yeah. Because the atmosphere. No. Better because it's a nicer beach. Worse because it's always packed in the it summer. It is. Well, actually, I went to Hope Beach yesterday with some mm. work friends and it was like dead. Yeah, like Hope Lawns there. is really nice. Which means, I've never been there before. I was like, mm. oh, this is great. Like with the skyline. Yeah, like, I lived yeah. there last year pretty much. Yesterday was such a nice day. Mm, I think it's, oh, really nice. it's got it's gotten quite cloudy today actually. But yesterday, it was full on clear sky, lovely blue sky. Mm. Um, and it, we chilled on the beach and a pizza. I did. Beautiful. It was lovely. Where was my invite? Uh, next question. Uh. <laughs> um, Penny, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Ooh. As in for holiday or just in general? Uh, let's say for like summer holiday. Summer's summer holiday. Uh, definitely somewhere warm. Yep. Uh, by a beach. Yep, lovely. But also near to a city so I can go to a city trip on so my holiday. So just Brighton. I wouldn't say I'd go on holiday to the place I go to uni. Makes but sense, yeah. Um, I'd say somewhere in Spain, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Italy. All of Spain. All of the whole country. <laughs> For one holiday. Yeah. So you go there because it's hot. It's mm, nice. I do like a good warm holiday. Yeah. I feel like if I go somewhere and it, the weather isn't nice, I'm not on holiday. I'm just going on a trip. Yeah, I see that. Mm. Whereas, I mean, w- w- um, we're thinking of going to Cornwall, aren't we? Yeah. And people say if it's hot there, it's like you're not in the UK. It's really weird. Exactly. Which would be really exactly. interesting. The reason why we're not going abroad abroad is because I don't have a passport. It's not because we're and just why? like, I really want to stay in England. And why don't you have your passport? Uh, because I am currently applying for my Irish citizenship. Because my granddad was Irish. <laughs> Excuse me? Your Irish citizenship. Irish <laughs> citizenship, yeah. Because you are quarter Irish? Quarter Irish, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm actually a quarter Italian, believe it or not. Yeah, but you tell everyone you're Italian, but you're not. Well, I... I That's like me going around just being like, yay, I'm Irish! But it's not but as... no one wants to brag about that. Exactly. So. So. <laughs> I am a quarter Italian. Yeah. Question four. Mm-hmm. What is your favourite movie quote? Movie quote? Oh. I feel like I'm one of those persons, persons. Persons. I'm one of those people that manage to slip a movie quote into different conversations with people, especially when it's a conversation with my brother and my dad. And I. Yeah. But I don't know if I have a favourite. I feel like if I had a go-to, it would definitely be from Star Wars. So, what? okay, what's the most common movie quote that you're saying? That you say, which is very on brand for Penny. Ooh. I don't know. What, what do I, I don't <laughs> what know do what you I say? say a lot. I don't think I do with you. I think I do um, in conversations with my family a yeah. lot. Yeah. But that's because You're like, gr- Asta la vista, like, Penny, you've got to stop <laughs> saying it. It doesn't make any sense. But it's because we obviously grew up on the same movies. Mm. Um, so we quote them a lot. A lot of the things we quote is from Red Dwarf, the TV show. I still haven't seen that. You need to. It's, really it's got good. that guy with the weird, like, polygon face or whatever, right? Polygon? Polygon head? It's Crichton. He's um, a robot. Oh, of course. <laughs> Basically. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing some pictures from it. Yeah. Um, and finally, question mm-hmm. five of the rapid fire questions. It's taken three hours to do so far. Uh, describe yourself with three words. 
three words. My name's Penny. My name <laughs> is as four. My name is. <laughs> My name's Penny. <laughs> My name's Penny. <laughs> Thanks, Penny. Thanks for that rapid fire questions. How did you find that? Um, it, it was great. Not as rapid. No, as you'd not. Expect. I wouldn't say rapid. I'd say. Answer some questions. Answer some questions <laughs> and discuss. It's like in, mm. in like in an exam question, it's like, answer and discuss mm. this. It's like, okay. Don't bring up exams. Now, Penny, what were we going to watch last week in the cinema? We were going to watch Aladdin. Because um, I have make-out movies, work, which I, I think I mentioned a few times in the Happiness podcast. So we have to schedule our social life around Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we don't, so we don't have a social <coughs> life. No. Um, we didn't watch Aladdin, which, to be mm. fair, it looked alright. There was a lot, a lot of criticism around the first trailer because of how Will Smith looked. Yeah, but they did fix it. They did fair. fix it, and like it's a, I feel like he shouldn't get as much slate as what he previously mm. got because he is trying to fill the shoes of some an, very big shoes. Some very big. Robin Williams was a god. He was a god. He was mm. incredible what he did. Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen it. We haven't seen it, and we're probably gonna watch it soon. Mm. I've heard uh, a lot about it. I've heard a lot of good reviews. Yeah. Um, especially from my dad. My dad texted me after he went to see it, and he was like, "It was amazing." They've uh, kind of not upped it. I think he said that it was on the same level, but um, it's brought something different to it than the first one did. Mm. And that's kind of the issue. Is like it, a lot of the Disney films coming out at the moment are live action. Yeah. And Aladdin and a, th- a few other ones are Dumbo, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King. They're bringing out Jungle Book, Cinderella. A, f- a, f- a few of the ones which yeah. they're making or have made. Um, and I, I kind of want to talk about how live action's changed the the plot or the narrative or, or the, yeah. the, the first initial experience you get from watching mm. a Disney a Disney film. Because yeah. obviously we grew up with the cartoon as alternatives of the stories, so we're very much used to that kind of almost child friendly with mm. the cartoon aspect. Yeah. How do you think the live action's going to going to change the experience of mm. the of the narrative? Um, I think obviously the um, the cartoon versions of these films came out over 20 years ago so there's very different um societal ideals and stuff like that um and i saw an interview with what's her name naomi scott the girl that plays jasmine in the new one and she was saying that obviously in the first one it was a lot about um her being like i can't i don't have to marry a man to be princess Mm -hmm. um and to be queen and this one's uh she said was taking that a step further and saying, I don't need a man to be able to rule a kingdom. Yeah. Um, and I should be able to do that just with who I am and showing that I can be a leader. Yeah. So I think um, just bringing them out so much later and in this day and age is, it allows them to bring a new argument to the table, mm-hmm. which I think is really good. And obviously, if you're just redoing a cartoon, it's very difficult to bring something new to it mm. rather than just remaking it the exact same thing yeah. with just different actors. So I think turning it from cartoon to live action really allows them to take it one step further. Yeah. At the same time, the whole Prince Ali um, song where Robin Williams is running around turning into different animals and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, I how they do that. Yeah, I think there's that part of it's definitely more difficult. Yeah. And obviously with the first trailer coming out and Will Smith looking atrocious mm. as the genie, um, it does make it more difficult to do those kinds of things, the not human aspects of it. But I think in the same way, it gives them another way to take the movie as yeah. well. Because for me, I really liked the I really liked the music in Beauty and the Beast, yeah. uh, and obviously the original cartoon. The, some of the animations are really good, and like um, it really immerses you because mm. of how some of the animations are very un unlifelike. Mm. Uh, whereas in the live action one it was I found it less immersive even though it was mm. more like it was more realistic. Um, because I think I was so used to the one that I grew up with and that kind yeah. of that kind of addresses the current demographic and the current audience of the, of these live action films. Like these are, these are gonna be kids that are growing up with the live action ones. Mm. And I wonder what their equivalent's gonna be in like twenty years time when they watch something which is like, oh, this is, this is like super live action. I'm so used to the live action mm. one. And will they look back to the cartoon ones and be like, that's not the real version of it. Yeah, plus specifically with um, Beauty and the Beast, um, when you make a live action version of it, you need to think not only do they sound the part, but do they look the part as well. Yeah. For me, personally, Emma Watson looked the part for Beauty and the Beast uh, to play Belle, but she didn't sound the part in her singing. And that's where that movie kind of went down a little bit for me. For me, the Disney films are very much about the music as much as it is about the story and the Mm -hmm. action. 
Um, so for me, it kind of let me down because they focus so much on that she looks the part and that her, Emma Watson as a person, she fits Belle so well, but her singing doesn't, isn't quite up to scratch. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a difficult part of making the live action, uh, films. Whereas with the cartoon versions, they kind of, they, it didn't matter whether they looked the part. It didn't matter if they could act. It just mattered if they were a voice actor and if they could sing. Exactly. Like there's a whole extra list of credentials now for somebody going into a live action Disney film because it's like you need to be able to act and sing, like you were saying. Yeah. Whereas, I don't know if some like they they might have been really good actors that the people that sung in the in the original cartoons, but mm. they were first like firstly singers. Yeah. And then the acting all came from the animation. Mm. Um, Speaking you could have pulled a uh, Troy Bolton from High School Musical 1. And, to... <laughs> and someone else singing. <laughs> That's, yeah, someone else singing. Is that uh, the they second could've... one I just sang? Yeah. I've got to... Yeah. They could have uh, voice dubbed over someone else singing if they don't sing as well. For Emma Watson. I think there were a few moments in the beginning of Beauty and the Beast where it looked like she was voice dubbed anyway. Yeah, so it did. It wasn't then... It wasn't the best done live action. What do you think of the animation of the, of the Beast in that film? I wasn't a fan. That's why I'm worried about Lion King coming out. Um, because uh, I think they the obviously humans acting in it, that looks great and that lo- they can make it very Disney and they can make all the sets around them very Disney. Mm-hmm. But it's I don't think the animation's quite up there yet to do animals yet yeah. to make it As look, realistic as yeah. what we used to. I mean, a, f- a few key examples recently, actually, in the news is obviously Lion King coming out. We saw the posters, which yeah. look quite good, but it's all about how they're going to get the hair right, the movement mm. right, the wind right. And I think animation is obviously always evolving. Yeah. Um, but a few key like milestones is in the Pokemon movie that's coming mm. out, po- Detective Pikachu. They a lot of the Pokemon had fur, and a lot of pe- there was a lot of backlash about that because they were like, "Why do Pokemon have fur? They don't in like the the um, mm. the uh, the games and the cartoons." But it's like they, those animals would have fur. Yeah, I feel like they would be it's a lot creepier if they were just skin yeah exactly as in in the live action one but it's just creepy. it's just weird seeing them with fur mm. um whereas um lion king we're used to lions having fur and yeah. everything as well um but yeah it's all about the animation and how realistic it's going to look with the wind against the mm. fur like each individual hair like hair and everything mm. um another one is sonic actually because sonic's coming out this year or next year uh, and there was massive backlash, obviously, around the design of Sonic. I don't know. I don't know if you saw the trailer or a picture of it. Uh, I saw it. Didn't they redesign it because of how much black uh, backlash? Backlash. <laughs> how much backlash there backlash was. Backlash they had. Yeah. Yeah. They do speak to people beforehand, and they like show them potential ideas for Sonic. They're like, mm. "Hey, we, like, what do you think of this one? What do you think of that one?" And then the, the, the people are like, "Oh, I like this because of this, this, and this." I think I saw a post on Reddit. I think it was where it was all of the um, alternative Marvel covers for Black Panther and mm. Doctor Strange and they look so cool so funky really artistic ones yeah yeah really artistic ones and like so different and that like they so stand out on a mm. shit on the shelf but like some of the some of the sampling group might have been like I don't like this because it reminds me of this or I don't like yeah. this because it reminds me of a video game or it reminds me of this and this mm. and they got very specific connotations which yeah. is why yeah and um, if it is a cartoony type cover mm. people are going to assume that it's a cartoon whereas if you've got the actors on it you're not only going to be like oh it's live action but it's also oh I know that actor from something yeah. else so I'm going to watch it yeah um, so it is more effective if it has got actors on it but artistically it looks a lot better if it doesn't yeah yeah so I, I think but yeah going back to Sonic there was probably a massive audience research going around and they mm. were like we want Sonic to look more lifelike so he, he looks more like relatable and like yeah. less like the cartoon maybe like there was probably so much feedback which led to the design of him but then as soon as they released the trailer there was so much backlash from audiences being like that's not the real Sonic his eyes are too small he looks creepy when he smiles and so because of that they are changing mm. the way Sonic looks but either way like <laughs> he, he, I think the reason why people were so Put off by him is because of how realistic the animations actually were. Yeah. They were like, okay, we get that Sonic, but he's he looks like hyper realistic. Yeah, and we that isn't the Sonic that we envisioned in our heads. Yeah, like the technology is amazing nowadays of how realistic you can get it. But at the same time, if you're turning it from a ca- cartoon character, that you kind of need to keep a little bit of that fantasy there rather than trying to make them into a almost human level realistic. Yeah. yeah. Because it does just get creepy. It is. And like, for example, just, yeah, Sonic. Yeah. Um, I think Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, Pikachu are doing doing the animations quite well. Mm. I mean, the trailer looked quite realistic. Yeah. Like, the Psyduck had fur and everything. The Pikachu mm. had, like, animations that look really yeah, cute. Yeah, I've heard very good things about that film. Yeah. And Ryan Reynolds, you can't really go wrong with him. Oh, no. I, I He's have, brilliant. He makes it. Speaking of, like, actors making films, um, mm. 
Jim Carrey in Sonic. Yeah. He's the egg... What's egg, the bad guy? Eggman? Eggman? Sure. He's the bad guy in it. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see if he saves the film. Mm, yeah, there's been a lot of posts saying that he's the only reason people are going to keep on going with the, wanting to watch the film. Yeah. I mean, there is actually a massive Sonic fan base, which mm. I only recently became exposed to when I kind of um, watched and watched some content into Sonic. I'm like, I was like, why is there a film on it? But it turns mm. out there's a massive Sonic fan space. There's also like a, a Sonic con or something. Like a, a, conference. a whole yeah. Comic Con type thing. Yeah, just Sonic. based for Sonic. Wow. And it's like so popular. Mm. Uh, I think an issue that the audience is going to have is that maybe they're thinking if they change the animation style to like what Sonic should look like, mm. then it doesn't make it a better film. Like yeah. the narrative and like the dialogue and the script makes it a, a, a mm. good film or not. So I think Jim Carrey definitely will be a big contributor to whether people think that film is going to be mm. successful or not. Yeah, to be fair, he is an amazing voice actor. Yeah, 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 exactly. But the Lion King posters do look quite good. Yeah, they do. I think the posters look really good, but when I watched the trailer, I was still hesitant about it. Like, yeah. I'm very intrigued at how it's actually going to look um, with a whole film of it, because you, obviously you only get a very brief snippet with the mm -hmm. trailer. Well, it's always going to be difficult to have animals which we're used to seeing because like they look yeah. re re really really re really realistic but having them talk and yeah. sing and have relationships which we only associate with humans it's mm. gonna be really interesting mm. to be um, fair they've already done um jungle book oh yeah um and that had the the boy in it the animation of the uh animals with the with Mowgli the boy mm -hmm. um and it to be fair once you get into it it's very good yeah um, but i think there's always the initial oh that looks kind of strange yeah. but once you're actually immersed into the film then you kind of ignore that it's live action yeah not live action animated yeah you do because you, you're, you're so you, you understand the world yeah. you're part of the world yeah definitely in. the only bit i didn't like from jungle book was the big monkey what was his name king <laughs> king louis? oh that whole thing king louis and it was um what was it, his name i forget his name what, him climbing through the ruined temples trying to catch... Yeah, mm. but just... What, uh, Christopher Walken, is that his name? Oh, was he, was he the big yeah, monkey? Yeah, he was the big monkey. Oh. And I I think I love him so much as an actor because I think he's hilarious, mainly just from his voice, that mm. hearing his voice in that, you can't really picture it being a monkey mm. um, just because you know the voice so well because his voice is so distinct. Yeah. Um, try and try and, try and say try and use his, his voice. No. How does it go? I, I don't... I'm just thinking... I'm thinking, um... Hairspray. Yeah. But... No, I can't do it. I don't do impressions. I can't do it. I don't do yeah. impressions. I can only do Seinfeld, as the audience of Having Words probably know. Mm hmm We all know. That's the thing that was before talking about a podcast in every conversation. It was my Seinfeld and impressions. Mm. Um, from B, B movie. He was... Yeah, he was he was Barry B for B movie. I know, you've told me. B's my honey! Well, give me a line from B movie. Because, this you know, is you my just... done with your shit voice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm done with this. Um, I want to try and say another line from B-Movie. Um, I don't want to work my entire life! i just do this for the rest of the podcast. Mm, the audience should pray for me. No, you're fine. You love it. You're clapping along. Yeah. I love B-Movie. I really enjoy it. Dumbo got a lot, a lot of backlash, even mm. though it had Danny DeVito in, which was, is, in, is an incredible way. He is way. amazing, yeah. And now, once again, you and I haven't seen Dumbo. Mm. Um, Let's talk about some more films we haven't seen yet. Woo! <laughs> uh, we haven't seen Dumbo, but just from the trailer and the animation of it, like, the animation of Dumbo as an elephant mm. looked quite good. It, it did, it looked quite good. But obviously, I think, with all the good animation of it, it all mm. comes down, and this is why it, the negative reviews were there it all comes down to the narrative as well yeah. and the script mm. and I think like you were saying earlier like it's all well and good that it's got the live action aspect and it's got and they can add new arguments to mm. it but they still they're, they're still limited by the original storyline definitely definitely um, and there's only so much you can change it because obviously it's it's going out for a new generation to see it so that mm. is even though they have seen the cartoon, but that is the film of their generation of that. Yeah. Um, whereas but you've still got all the people our age and older that remember the um, the animation from my childhood so you can't change it too much yeah. um, until there's like an outroar from I think that's the issue that a lot of the producers and um, production agents, uh, production companies are having is they're trying to make it 
perfect for the new audience, <coughs> the new youngsters, yeah. and adapting to their lifestyle and what mm. they're exposed to in film. But they're also trying to make it loved by people that are so used to and grew up with the original films. Definitely. And I think it causes a conflict in narrative. Mm. Like, you can't do both. Mm. Just focus on one. I think it'd be very difficult to find any child in the entire world that hasn't seen a Disney film. Like, everyone yeah. everyone knows Disney, and everyone is... Everyone's heard, is, heard of Disney, yeah. Everyone's heard of Disney, but it's part of everyone's childhood so much mm. that it's very difficult to get around that. Yeah, everyone, without even knowing so, because, like you said, that everyone's heard of Disney or, mm. or, like, has a favourite character without even yeah. knowing it, it's hard to not get passionate about it when, exactly. it's, when you grow up next to around yeah. it. Especially because everyone, even if they're not necessarily their favourite Disney films, but everyone's got the nostalgia to do with one or two Disney films. Like, for me, it was Aladdin. Um, that was the one I watched the most when I was a child because it was yeah. my dad's favourite. Um, so I think in that way, everyone's got one Disney film that they'd be very sensitive to if they change it. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think, what is one film that you... that A Disney film that you really like, which you think could be ruined through live action? Um, I... I actually would have said Aladdin because of all the genie bits. Um, yeah. Because he changes form so much and it adds so much to mm. the songs, especially in Prince Ali um, yeah. and in Friend Like Me. Yeah. Um, he, I think it's so well done in the cartoon and obviously with Robin Williams as well that it would have been very, very difficult to fill those shoes. Exactly. Luckily, they do have Will Smith, who's an incredible actor. Incredible, yeah. I, d- I mean, I- I've heard that he has his own twist to mm, the genie. He adds, like, a Fresh Prince twist to it, yeah. almost. Which would be which would be interesting. Yeah. Like, like, like he, I think he, he posted about it on the yeah. Instagram. He was like, I can't feel his boots, but, you know, mm. I'm just trying to do it justice. Yeah, he's, definitely. He's had, like you said, he's adding, he's adding his own, like, spin mm. to it as well. Um, what's one What's one um, Disney film that you grew up with which you would love to see remade again in, in an animation or live action format? Because um, I've got my one. I've got my one in mind. I reckon you could, you could guess it. I'm trying to read your mind here. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Hercules. Hercules. Oh, I do love Hercules. I think, yeah, like you said, like Aladdin... Uh, like, the animation style needs to be mm. good for Aladdin to work. Yeah. But I think we are at a point where we could... That it does work. Mm. Uh, obviously, being able to animate things through cartoon and drawing, mm. you can. You're kind of. Uh, there's no limit to the amount of imagination and yeah. stuff that you can do. Whereas special effects, it does come down mm. to money. There's a massive aspect because it costs so much mm. to even. But it is Disney. So. But it is Disney. They've got yeah. all the money in the world. So it's fine. Exactly. They own Marvel. They now. own everything. Exactly. They own Star Wars as Star well. Star Wars, now. Marvel, everything. <laughs> Me. Woo. <laughs> Um, but I think Hercules, there's a lot of there's a lot of bits which mm. the bits based in like the god realm and everything, yeah. um, which would be quite interesting to see how they how they get around that. And obviously there have been I think two or three Hercules films made based off the character of Hercules and the yeah. the Greek mythology of him. Yeah, a lot of them. There was that one with the was it with the Rock? Yeah, I, um, I never watched that. But one. I think I haven't seen it either. But I think that it's Hercules is one of the stories that is so easy to go down the gritty route. That it'd be very interesting to see the Disney route with it. Yeah, especially with song as well. Imagine, yeah, imagine, exactly. Especially if The Rock came back for <laughs> Disney, being like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do well, it." Well, he's already um, the Maui. character in Maui, Maui in Maui. Moana. Yeah, yeah. And he did a good. He did he, a great job. With that, that would be a very good one to see live action. Um, Who would you? Yeah, what uh, what Disney film would you like to be made into live action that is hasn't already? I think saying it Moana, but at the same time, that's a very recent film. Yeah. Um, so I think it, it's not yet time to do it in no. live action, but, but I it, think... It will, eventually. 10, 20 years down the, t- down the line, I think it would be very interesting to yeah. see how they would adapt that. Because I, I think of the recent ones, that's probably my favourite. Yeah. Um, I, I really like the storyline of that. Mm. Another one that I just remembered was Treasure Planet. Yeah, that would be very difficult to make with mm. like. Do you remember you used to get the CD ROMs from it in cereal boxes? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I remember that when I was a child. Yeah, they. Uh, 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 I watched a documentary on it on YouTube actually, mm. uh, and how Disney invested so much money into it, mm. into the the like production of it to see if it would pay off. It didn't pay off at all. Like, it, unfortunately, it didn't get the kind of viewership that it wanted to. It, it has a lot now because mm. of DVD and stuff, such as what's that film Titanic. That when it came out in cinemas, it wasn't as big. Yeah, what's that? What's that film? Titanic, the, the really little one. Titanic. No, I mean, no, one no. of the Oscars. Titanic. No, huh? t- no, wait. What was it? Or was it Shawshank Rede- Redemption? There's there's a film that Shawshank Redemption didn't get anywhere near the viewership when it first came out than it has now because no one could remember the name of the film. Was it that? Yeah, I saw an interview with Morgan Freeman on it, and he said that 
Um, it was such a good film and the people who saw it loved it so much but no one could see it because word of mouth wise people yeah. were just like I went to see um, uh, Shin Flam Shin Flam Shang Shang, Shang, Shang. Um, re- 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 yeah no one could remember the name so uh, it was very difficult to get it through word of mouth and at the time that was the main thing the main I, think, I think it was that film then yeah. it was that film that didn't make much money at, at box office but when it was released as DVD it made so much money yeah it's a um, cult classic now yeah so yeah, I watched this Treasure Planet documentary, um, and they they of said how uh, as soon as it was re- released, Disney just like literally cut cut ties with it. They didn't like um, continue to push it and continue to continue to distribute it. I've heard a lot of stuff about Disney, it's more so their gaming industry side yeah. of Disney. With one of the gaming uh, companies that Disney owns, uh, that they were making a massive profit, but they weren't me- uh, they weren't meeting the expectations that Disney had. So Disney yeah. shut them down. Like Disney has very high expectations mm. of what they want from from a company. Yeah, there's a lot of goals you need to hit. With yeah. Disney. Which is why Treasure Planet just kind of, they didn't push it anymore. Although I think it might have maybe made their money back, mm. but it didn't get anywhere close to what Disney wanted at yeah. all. Um, so I think it would be really cool. I don't think we might get, ever get a Treasure Planet film again, but it'd be really interesting to see how they did it as live action. Mm. Um, yeah, I think any any of the films that aren't human based, because obviously you've got all the Disney princess ones that are mainly human, like Cinderella, like Beauty and the Beast, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, actually no Beauty and the Beast there's a lot of other things but um, all the ones that aren't human like the animal ones or the alien ones for example Treasure Planet um, that would be very interesting how they would integrate that um, and make it work yeah yeah exactly um, like I think personally I think the Jungle Book for the most part was very well done and integrating Mowgli into the animal mm. kingdom but um, it's interesting with Lion King how it's going to work with it purely being animals yeah yeah, because there's no humans in any of the films, is there? Or is there poachers in one of them? Yeah, in the second one, maybe? In the, or the second one remember. or third one, like a child gets taken, there's poachers in a car or something like that. Yeah, it really gets dark. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> God, really actually gets dark. Yeah, Lion King, such a heartwarming film, the lion dies. <laughs> Lovely. Spoiler alert. I mean, alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Oh no, I mean, it's been, what, 20 years now? Yeah. Um, I'm looking for, or maybe not even 20 years, 15 years. Mm. I'm definitely looking forward to watching the Lion King animation mm. because I think you've, you've seen it on stage as well in London. Yes. So we've seen it's it amazing. on stage, obviously a lot younger. Yeah. We've seen it on stage and we've seen it as a film, as, an, mm. as a cartoon animation. So it'd be really interesting to see another um, adaptation of yeah. Lion King again. And I think there's quite a few um, good actors and famous people in the yeah, new Lion King. Uh, Beyonce is Nala. That would be so cool. Um, oh, God, that would be so cool, actually, thinking about yeah, some of the songs. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, Seth Rogen is Pumba. Donald Glover is Simba. Childish Gambino. That's going to be cool, because yeah. he was... Uh, he's really expanding his career. He was also in the Han Solo movie as well, playing yeah, Orlando. Yeah, he was. He was in um, Spider-Man as well, Homecoming. Was he Spider-Man? He... Was it Homecoming or was, yeah Homecoming? Um, he so. played someone trying to get guns from someone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and then the back he got of the truck under a bridge. Yeah, yeah, but he was in that because the directors also directed Community, and uh, all of the main actors, I think, bar two of them from Community, have been in one of the Marvel movies now. Yeah. Um, for example, what's his name? The Chinese guy that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I, I know which one. Yeah. He's, a, he's a comedian as well. Should yeah, he was in um, Endgame. He played the security guard. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. funny. Um, so they've all been in one of the Marvel movies, and that's just a little Easter egg for all the community fans. Speaking of Marvel movies, I mean, obviously, we're keeping with Disney here. Yeah. Because uh, Disney owns everything. We're not getting any more Marvel films. Yeah. That's so sad. It's been so long it's of been, our life. It's been so long of our life. So long of our lives. Because, like, every year, every month, like, you have a Marvel film to look forward to. And obviously, mm. at the moment, all I can think is the next Spider-Man film. And I never, I don't like this version of Spider-Man anyway. He's my favourite version, to be honest. <laughs> well, I, you're my least favourite version of... Penny, wait. Don't have to get personal. You don't have to get personal about Shit. it. <laughs> personal podcast. <laughs> so yeah, it just feels weird that I'm mm. like, I was always looking forward to the, the end game or or like the film when they all come together, which is obviously yeah. Infinity War. Um, so it's weird like not having anything to look forward to Marvel-wise Yeah, anymore. do you remember when the first Avengers film came out and everyone was just like, oh, it's such so ambitious putting so yeah. many characters in and then they had Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah. Think of all the possibilities for the future. Like, when, yeah. they, when they start that next venture, they're, they're going with Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, aren't they? Yeah, I think I read somewhere that Spider-Man is supposed to be the new centre of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then there's also, obviously, the Guardian side of it as well. Yeah. Um, but obviously with... What happened to Iron Man <laughs> that we don't speak of yet? Yeah, it's too soon. Yet, it's too, too soon. soon. Um, or what didn't happen to Iron Man? So 
so emotional. <laughs> um, yeah. Also not emotional. For the ending of Endgame, um, obviously Spider-Man being so close to Iron Man, Spider-Man's kind of taking over. His and you can Exactly. And um, in the most recent trailer for Spider-Man, you can almost see that happening and them mentioning Iron Man and being like, you need to step up now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's going to be a really interesting shift. But like you said, you've it's almost like a whole new generation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, now. and like obviously we've been hinted towards it with the like, Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, which I don't know how much longer mm. Thor's going to be. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is, is going to be in yeah. it. Um, but, but yeah, Spider-Man. Do you reckon like, he's gone on a My Fat Diaries or something like that? A Weight Watchers programme before I'm, the next... I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to see. Do you reckon um, me there'll be a intense gym sequence? Mm, mm, yeah, a nice like half hour. Long. Maybe they'll just Taylor be a, Swift playing. In they'll the just they'll just be a they'll do, we are never. Uh, they'll just be a nice little like uh, just a film based on yeah. his gym workout. Mm. Uh, that'd be so like cool. a little mini episode that they like a li- little teaser trailer they release. It's just him working. Or out. Or maybe like at the end of Spider Man mm. after the credits. Oh, the end credits. Yeah, buff. that'd be really cool. That would be really cool. I just think it's a little bit too fragmented to build a build another the whole Marvel experience based yeah. off of Spider-Man. Guardians of the Galaxy, you can explore all of the, all of the space yeah. ventures. Um, just, it will feel too different to what we've already had. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying Iron Man was... When did Iron Man come out, the first Iron Man? Uh, 2008, I think. 2008, like, it's less relatable because he's like a millionaire, billionaire, yeah. or whatever. But it's more relatable because it's based on Earth and like... Yeah based around things that we're familiar with, mm. New York and everything, whereas Guardians of the Galaxy, I suppose the familiarity comes from them as characters and we know what they've yeah. been through. Um, but at the same time, that gives them so much more to explore. Because obviously they are in space, it's almost if all the Earth rules go out the window. So they yeah. can, it's really, they can... Woo! Go no gravity! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah. so it'd be really, really interesting to see what kind of Marvel characters and Marvel... Um, a lot of maybe the super nerds will be like, oh, but they live in space, why can't mm. they come fight Thanos or whatever? Like, what kind of characters they can kind of bring yeah. in and make their own movies based on? Mm. And I saw an interview with the Russo brothers that obviously directed a lot of the films, including Endgame and Infinity War, and yeah. they were saying that when they were writing Endgame, it wasn't to set up anything else, whereas throughout the entire however many years it's been so far, like 11 years, um, that it's always been you're writing about 10 different movies at once they can all converge into this yeah. one thing at the end whereas they were they all write, writing Endgame yeah they were writing Endgame as the ending they mm. weren't writing it to leave anything open and that gave them complete creative freedom, freedom mm. to do what they did with it which was amazing yeah um, but the reason they did that was so that they could have that creative freedom but it meant that they haven't really left anything for the future no so it's all a completely open book mm. It's quite, uh, it's maybe quite optimistic for the future of mm. Marvel from the next Spider Man film. Because mm. the momentum from mm. creating the previous Marvel films is very much carried across into that Spider Man film. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look like it's just like, oh, we'll make another one. It looks like mm. they've, they've put in a lot into this film. Yeah, definitely. Especially adding, what is it, Jake Gyllenhaal in this mm. one? As uh, uh, what? Sh- Mysterio? Mysterio, yeah. yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think it's almost detracting from what we know as Spider-Man as a character, because it's supposed to be your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. He deals with the neighbourhood issues that happens to be, like, what is it, the Sandman? Oh, yeah, okay. Octopus Man. What was his name? (laughs) Doctor Octopus. Doctor Octopus, yeah. Um, But it was your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, whereas now he's in Europe and dealing with much bigger problems. He's been to space, all of these things. And it's kind of... It's developing that character so much, but I think there's also the potential to be an uproar from the die-hard comic book fans um, because it's kind of diverging from the Spider-Man that we know so much. Yeah, it'd be be really interesting to see Mm. which direction they push it in, especially how they leave the end of that film. Yeah. Because obviously Tom Holland uh, spoiled the fact that it's going to be more than two or more than yeah, one he said this um, he said in an interview yeah while I was feeling filming two and three and I was like ah uh, excuse, excuse me, me? I can't believe that two and three two okay. and three uh, so it'll be really interesting to see if they leave it open for another film yeah. or maybe they just introduce another character in that and mm. they'll build a series off of that character mm. like there's no way Marvel's going to stop like their film department they're, they're, like they basically control the film industry with some of their films yeah, completely. they can't stop making and films and Disney controls them and Disney controls them exactly Crazy. so it'll be really interesting to see what 
the kind of direction they're going to push it in. I mm. really hope they make more films like Thor Ragnarok because that was really funny. That was brilliant. That was yeah. funny, but also has so much meaning behind it, mm. like the connection between Thor and Hulk and the things <coughs> that they learned along the way, and also yeah. the space aspect as well. Like it was spacey, mm. but it wasn't too out there. Like yeah. the place where they had the arena. At the, like where Thor, yeah. where Thor and Hulk were fighting, mm. like the kind of the black market aspect of yeah. like just the streets and everything. Yeah. It, was, it was really quite earth like. I, yeah. hope, I hope they bring that across. And fun fact about that film, <gasps> the please. Right fun fact um, is that the line where Thor first sees Hulk and it's, he's supposed to battle him, but finds out it's Hulk and he's just like he's a friend from work. That line was written by a Make a Wish kid that was there on the day. He was like, "Oh, I think you should say this." And that's really cool. They put it in the movie, and it's one of the best lines. That's that's really cool. Yeah. I wonder what would have happened otherwise. Yeah. That's I really think cool. he did have another. I don't think he even said anything. He just said yes. Yeah. This is brilliant. It's the Hulk. But it was in the trailer as well for I, I yeah. think for it. So, yeah. Mm. It was a brilliant line, and it was written by a kid that was there. As is make a wish. wish, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Mm. Now, Penny. Yes. On the lines of Disney, mm. you're going to you're going somewhere on Christmas, around Christmas, aren't you? Oh yeah. Um. Where where where's that place? I'm going. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Disney World in you seem Florida. Li- look, yeah, okay. Every time you said that, you can't say it without a smile. I'm so excited. I can I'm tell because how many lie. hours worth of Disney content have you seen? Um, Disney vlogs. Yeah, so my current thing is when I'm stressed about exams, I tend to take my mind off it by pretending that I'm about to go on holiday. Um, <laughs> so I even, mean, you are, though, yeah, just in, like, um, in a six few months. Six months' time. Six, seven months. But, yeah, I, over Christmas, I'm going to Florida for two and a half Woo! weeks with my dad and my brother, which would be really nice. But I have, in the run-up to that, as in six months beforehand, I've watched completely excessive amounts yeah. of Florida vlogs and people going to Disney World, and I'm just like, I already know the ex- the whole place. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like, nothing is going to be a surprise to me. I've ruined all the magic. Great. Um, but I'm really excited. I'm I'm. Are you going to vlog it? Great. Like all the vlogs you've seen? I'm not going to vlog it, but I Hi, might... Hi, I'm Penny. I'm in uh, Disneyland. I don't know. Um, my plan is to... I definitely want to document it with photographs because I think... Um, for anyone, um, Disney World and going to Universal and all those different things, it's kind. Of, it's especially when you go to America to do it. Mm-hmm. It's not the kind of thing that you do over and over again. Yeah. So whereas obviously you can go to Thought Park or the zoo, so many different times. I mean, for a lot of people, it's literally but, a once in a lifetime. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I did go when I was very little. I remember it being amazing, and I remember little bits of it yeah but i don't remember it at all so i want to even when i'm very old i want to be able to remember going and i want to remember everything so i think i will document it yeah a lot more this time with photos just loads of um, selfies yeah and i had a conversation with my dad who's obviously i'm going with um the other day and we were saying we are going to be the biggest white girls <laughs> running around disneyland <laughs> posing with all the characters and we can't wait yeah. i'm going to get Minnie mouses oh it's going to be amazing i'm going to get you some mini mouses oh, it's going to be great thanks you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember when I went, my parents were concerned that my brother and I were too old. I think I was... Meanwhile, my dad's like 18? 52 and he's so excited. <laughs> he's can't, he can't wait. Yeah. Um, but we still had so much fun. Like, I mm. think a lot of people are concerned that like, kids are going to love it no matter what. Mm. But if they're teenagers, are going to like it. And like, mm. I think a lot of people that go are actually in their 20s. So yeah. um, I think they have something for everything yeah. like they're very uh, Disney's very good at obviously planning and like knowing their audience in yeah. this regard so they know exactly what their audience is going to like and they know how big their audience exactly. is exactly and they, they know the best thing to get the most money because Disney's like main game plan here is is to apply to the, the biggest and like the mass yeah. audience and that exactly. is obviously 20s to 30s and then so mm. on the people who actually have the time and money mm. to go away I think there is that phase though that you kind of you don't get disinterested with it almost but it's almost as if you're too cool in quotations for yeah. Disney, and that's usually tends to be the mid-teens area, and yeah. then you start loving it again. Yeah. Uh, but I know I definitely went through the phase that anything that I loved as a child, I'd almost shun out because I was like, "Yeah, I'm an adult now. I'm grown up. I'm not gonna like that rubbish anymore." Yeah, I don't like Disney um, princesses. Yeah. And you're like, you and see was, it one day, you're like, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, <laughs> that's Disney, pretty cool princess, Disney princess. Actually. princess, and start watching High School Musical again. And it's great. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's definitely that phase that it is risk are you bringing your teenage boys it to is. Disneyland but yeah. at the same time you're always going to love it it's always going to bring back that nostalgia from when you were a kid exactly and I think that's where the magic from Disney come from is bringing back that childlike feeling yeah 
And that's that obviously links back to the whole these live action Disney films are going to be the Disney films that people grow up with. Exactly. That these are going to create the nostalgia for so many people, mm. like like the like the like the cartoon animations yeah. have for us. It'll be interesting to see how Disneyland changes based on the new content being created. Yeah. I mean, the whole reason like all these films are coming back around again is because I think um, Walt Disney, the guy. Uh, he put in his will, he was like, the, the films need to be made every 10 years so each generation mm. can experience the nostalgia and the experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, like you were saying earlier, like new arguments have to be made, such as mm. in Aladdin, the whole idea of that Jasmine doesn't need Aladdin to kind of become her own person. Yeah. Um, or... And it's not even, I don't need a husband, it's a, I don't need a man to rule the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, or like in other films, like I don't need a man to be happy. I don't need yeah. to find love. Like there's so mm. many other films, and that's going to be quite difficult to address some of the older Disney mm. films, that, such as Snow White. Like she can only be um, awoken by awoken a by a man's yeah. kiss yeah. or whatever. It's like that's probably why Snow White hasn't been made into live action. Yeah, it's I think like, a lot it, of things like that they have aged quite badly just because of how much we've progressed as a society. Yeah. It'd be really interesting to see mm. if they did make it. It's like, how would you get around that? Maybe exactly. like the guy's just the, the man's kiss doesn't work, and they I don't know. Like a lot of the original narrative will have to be. Changed. Why don't they turn her into a lesbian? Turn her into a lesbian. Prince Charming doesn't work, but oh no, it's Prince Charming, comes... but it's a female Prince Charming, Princess yeah, Charming. Interesting. Penny, before we finish, yeah. Firstly, thank you for coming on the podcast. No problem. Thank uh, you for having me. Um, you're going to be on future episodes as well. Uh, I really want to get you on an episode of Having Games, which we haven't done in a while because of just the guest list and people yeah. being busy. It's a difficult time the of the year. Guest the guest it's list. It's an exclusive club. Okay. The guest list, exactly. Good luck trying to get on it. Mm. And before we finish, any shout outs for you, Penny? I want to shout out Disney. I'm oh. coming to Disney World soon. Please give me free stuff. I don't think, yeah. I would it... love some fast passes. Oh my God, they just emailed me Shit. saying, uh, no. <laughs> Well, oh. that, I'm just I'm just happy they listen to Happy Words podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now sponsored by Disney. We're not sponsored by Disney. <laughs> um, shout out Disney. I'm gonna shout out. I want to shout out Evelyn. Yeah. Little baby, Tom's baby. Little baby, Tom's little baby, adorable. Yeah. I'm, She's I, so yeah, cute. I don't want to shout her out because that means I'm gonna want to shout her out every single week. Yeah. So instead, I'm gonna shout out Tom. You know what? He needs all the shout outs he can get because he's he's in a new position in his life right now with a baby. Mm. And Tom, if you're listening, he needs to all this, the help he can get. He needs yeah. all the help he can get. Tom, if you're sorry, when you're listening to this. Um, we shout you out we wish you the best of luck and um, I, I, I want to help out as much as possible when I can same same if you want to hear more about Tom's Baby listen to last week's episode episode 21 episode 21 with Tom thank you ever so much for listening you guys you can find us on Facebook Instagram Twitter and Reddit and you can listen to us on Spotify iTunes um, and literally any other podcasting platform now uh, and if you want you can support us on Patreon uh, eventually we're going to release more content down the line on Patreon exclusive to Patreon Patreons members yeah you can find us at patreon.com forward slash having words feel free to leave a review on anything that you're listening to us on and if you enjoyed this episode leave us a five star rating if you didn't leave us a four star rating um, and we'll see <laughs> if you really hated if it if you really hate us leave us a four yeah no <laughs> then just don't stop listening you shouldn't have listened this far in and we'll see you next week where a special birthday episode because it's my birthday next weekend next Saturday woo we're recording this on Saturday the 1st and my birthday is on Saturday the 8th and Tom is actually hosting the episode for me lovely so like episode whatever episode Tom hosted episode 6 7 I think um, Tom will be hosting again and it will be a very exclusive birthday episode so definitely tune into that Penny once again thank you ever so much for joining me no problem thanks for having and me and before we finish a final word or a final bit of advice for our listeners final bit of advice if you do have exams to prep for why don't you plan a holiday instead yeah yeah Penny's uh, got exams and she's planning and watching vlogs instead of doing any sort of exam prep. Exactly. It's great. You're crying again. Oh no. Help me. Help me please. Penny, thanks ever so much for coming on. See you in the future. Hopefully it wouldn't take 21, 22 episodes to get you on. Bye. Bye.